This is an 18-year-old male whose status posted a motor vehicle accident. He was found conscious at the scene but was unable to move. He was taken to a hospital where a spinal cord injury steroids were started and on neurologic examination he was found to have a C5 Asia C presentation. A CT scan was obtained at the outside hospital and it demonstrated anterior subluxation of C5 on C6 resulting in a perch facet on the right and a locked facet on the left with the narrowing of the spinal canal. The goal of a closed reduction is the expedient decompression of the spinal canal. A prerequisite is that the patient be awake, alert, and able to comply with serial neurologic assessment, and one must have the ability to obtain serial imaging during the reduction. Note that the presence of a skull fracture is a contraindication to the application of traction. Note that with a reduction maneuver, there is a risk of disc herniation. The prevalence of disc herniation has been noted in some studies to increase to 56% from 18% prior to the reduction. During the reduction, there may be a decline in neurologic examination. If this should happen, one may need to remove the traction weight and obtain an emergent MRI. Do not attempt a closed reduction maneuver if one does not have the ability to proceed with emergent advanced imaging studies and or emergent surgical procedure. Local anesthesia consisting of 1% lidocaine is applied to the pin sites. Next, the garner weltons are prepared for placement. The pins are coated with bacitracin ointment. Note that the pin position is approximately 1 cm anterior to the external auditory meatus and 2 cm superior to the pinna of the ear. Alternatively, the pins may be placed 1 cm posterior to the external auditory meatus so as to allow for greater flexion of the cervical spine during the reduction maneuver. After placement of the tons, the patient is then transferred to a rotor rest bed. Restraints are then applied to prevent the patient from sliding with traction. An initial 10 pounds of traction is applied, a lateral radiograph is obtained, and then initial weight was increased to 20 pounds. It is recommended to obtain a lateral radiograph after the initial 10 pounds of weight to confirm the absence of ligament disc damage and instability prior to adding additional weight. At this point, the vector of the traction was adjusted for further flexion and an x-ray is obtained at 20 pounds. After obtaining the x-ray at 20 pounds, the vector was moved into further flexion. Traction was increased to 40 pounds and another x-ray was obtained. Throughout the procedure, 30 minutes was allowed to elapse between each weight increase. As demonstrated by Kotler et al., this is the amount of time that is sufficient to allow for soft tissue creep. Here we see the alignment of the spine at 50 pounds of traction, 60 pounds of traction, 70 pounds of traction, 80 pounds of traction. At a weight of 90 pounds, the vector of traction was again adjusted to allow for more flexion. The surgeon must take care not to overflex the neck, as this may narrow the spinal canal. After confirming that the facet dislocation had adequate distraction and flexion vector to unlock it, a gentle anterior force was applied to the caudal vertebra while palpating the spinous process of the cephalad vertebra. Traction weight was then reduced to 60, then to 20 pounds under radiographic surveillance. All weight was removed and a final radiograph was obtained. A Miami J cervical orthosis was applied and then the Gardner-Wells tons were removed. Following reduction, the patient demonstrated neurologic improvement and a posterior effusion from C5 to C7 was performed the following day due to the posterior ligamentous instability.